As many of you are probably aware, if you take some borax, mix it with some water, paint that solution onto a piece of wood, and then laser engrave it, you can take a laser engraving that looks like this and make it look much darker like this. But what if I told you you can make a darker laser engraving without borax, without any other chemicals, and without changing the speed or power of your laser. Oh, and this works on both CO2 and diode lasers. Welcome back to my workspace, everybody. Today, I am testing out this laser engraving method that I found, and it blew my mind that it is this simple to make darker engravings. But there are some caveats to it, so be sure to stick around to the end where I talk about some of the gotchas. Now, this is based on a video by Computer Creations, which I will link in the description, and he did his testing on a CO2 laser. I am but a simple maker. I do not have a CO2 laser. I've got a diode laser, and I thought, I wonder if this will work on a diode laser because there are some fundamental differences between the two and it turns out it does. So on my laser, I've got an adjustment knob here that I can turn it up and down. And the way that, the way that this laser is meant to focus is it came with this little cut out piece of acrylic that is, I've measured it, it's three millimeters-ish. You slide it under, put this on top of it, make sure you can move it, and then that's focused. But why are you telling us about how you focus your laser? Nobody cares. Well, the reason I'm telling you is because I'm setting up the baseline. And the way we're going to adjust the darkness today is by modifying the distance from the laser to the material. In fact, we will be defocusing the laser by moving it further away from the material in increments of one millimeter. And I'm gonna show you how making this change will give you darker engravings. The problem is how do I measure because this doesn't have precise measurements, it's just up and down. So what I've done is I remove the safety guard there and I take my calipers and then I just measure up. Try and keep it as square as possible. Get a reading on the calipers. They've actually moved since I, but take the reading of the calipers and then I just add. So if I wanna increase <clears throat> my distance, I set the calipers to what I want it to be, lock them in, and then I just lower my laser until it's touching, and then there. Just so you know, I do have some shots in here of me running the laser without the guard on. I do not typically do that. I only did it for this for, well, two reasons. One, for the awesome cinematography, which turned out mediocre at best, and also for measuring purposes. Once I measured it, I put the guard back on and then run it with the guard on. Also, it's in the Ortor enclosure, which does an okay job of keeping laser out. I've got black duct tape on it because there are some gaps, but even when I'm running it without the guard, if I'm filming, I've got my spiffy awesome OC6 rated or some, I forget the exact rating of these, glasses on. So there is no chance, hopefully, that I'm gonna go blind doing silly things that you shouldn't do at home that is running your laser without a guard. We have done one batch and I've moved it a millimeter at a time. So let's take a look. My starting position was 23.76 millimeters. I ran all of these at 7,000 millimeters per minute. It's millimeters per minute because again, I have a diode laser and not a CO2, so it's slower. And 80% power. So this was the first one. I moved it a millimeter, then two millimeters and three millimeters. And it's, it's a little hard to see on camera. You can kind of see it in person it's definitely a slightly darker shade hard to tell if it's really working on this first round so you know what that means more testing okay second round of tests so i went 
from 27 millimeters up to 35. I only did four tests though. I sort of got impatient at the end and I just made a huge, made some huge jumps. So let's take a look at the difference in this. So this is 27 millimeter. Again, same speed and power, but look at the difference. Look how much darker this one is. It is definitely making a difference. However, you can probably notice that we're starting to get a little bit of distortion in the engraving. In fact, it's not very clean here on the 35. Not too bad on the 30. It's a little bit where it's missing some spots. And, uh, but definitely it is much darker. We have seen on text that this method makes a big difference in making the engravings darker. But what about on images? No, it does not work on the diode laser. Let's take a look. So for the diode laser, this side, uh, the image, by the way, is a thumbnail from one of my previous borax videos where I talk about not using borax. Not terrible over here regularly. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, great, engra uh, a great image to engrave, but I like the irony of it. So, so this is the 35 millimeter that got the, uh, so this distance here, same power and everything. But as you can see, when you set it to image, because it goes, I think I have mine set from 10% to 80% power when it's doing an image. As you can see at the low power, it does not engrave enough. And that makes a lot of sense because we're defocusing the laser. So instead of having a very pinpoint focused laser that implies all the energy to one tiny little spot, we've spread it out. So let's take a look at the size of the dots. This is the laser focused at the three millimeter distance. But you can see it's just a small pinpoint. So let's move this up to 35 millimeters and see what it looks like. And now, see it's, um, it's a lot longer. It's wider basically. It's not a nice pinpoint dot anymore, which means now we're not getting nearly as much power. So that's why in the image, it doesn't work as well. Now, I don't know what the difference will be on a CO2 laser because they have more power, you might be able to bump up your power a little bit and pull this off. I don't know. I don't have a CO2 laser to test this with. So if one of you does, give it a try and let me know down in the comments if it worked for you. Okay, let's talk about the caveats to this because it looks good. It works. But again, there are some drawbacks. So the first thing, like I said, as we got into the darker images, because we're defocusing the laser more and more, we're starting to get more distortion on the engraving. Also, you can see we're starting to get more spots where it misses. Now, you can fix this issue to a degree by decreasing the interval in light burn or depending on what program you're using, increasing the lines per inch or DPI, whatever the terminology is in your program. Basically, it's going to make the laser do more passes over the image, which should take care of some of those missing spots. However, this will increase the time of your engrave. So, Depending on how quickly you're trying to get something done, this may or may not be a solution for you. So I've run my hand along this one on this side, and it's nice and smooth. On this side, I can start to feel this is actually engraving deeper and deeper, getting this darker engraving. So if you're looking for just something on the surface, eh, this, this may not work for you. This is going to go a little deeper into the wood than just normally engraving it. And of course, a big issue, like I said, is images not on a diode laser. Maybe on a CO2, it might pull it off, but the diode, yeah. So that's definitely a drawback. So this definitely has potential depending on what you're engraving. So if you were surprised at this working as I was, do me a favor, hit the like button because it helps me out a lot. It helps me keep producing these videos and sharing information with all of you. And I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to see my other previous videos on Borax and why I'm not using Borax, you can check out the original Borax video up here. And then my follow-up video where I did more testing down here. And thanks for watching.